So today we're going to be talking a little bit about HLG and what is the correct workflow inside the updated version of Premiere Pro, a little bit inside DaVinci and a sprinkle of Final Cut, all within a split second. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Mandry, and in this channel, I help you with the tech tools to be creative. And let's address the most important question here. Why even bother using HLG? So right now I'm preparing a video comparing all the picture profiles that you can find in Sony cameras and why to use them. So if it's ready, you're going to be able to see a card up here. If not, just keep watching. It's going to come in the very, very near future. In this case specifically, I shot using the Gamma as HLG3 and the color space was BT2020 and I'm gonna explain why in just a second. And we're exporting this for web purposes and not for HDR, which was the original intent of HLG, but more about this in another video. What you're seeing here is Premiere trying to show you what was captured in camera, but without really recalculating it to show you on the display, meaning that it just looks blown out like this. So instead, if you go to the bin, right click on the clip that you want and go to modify, interpret footage. Now down here, you're gonna be able to choose what was the origin. In this case, it is saying that it was REC 2100 HLG. But to be correctly displayed, you have to transform it down to REC 709 or REC 2020, which is what I used to shoot this clip. So if you choose directly REC 709, which is also the way that our timeline is set, Premiere is going to understand that it needs to grab all those values and recalculate, meaning that now the clip is not blown out anymore. But the color space hasn't been remapped yet, so there are two ways of going about it. One of them is the traditional way of just applying a LUT that will recalculate the color values and put them in the right place, meaning that you won't be seeing any more these green hues on the skin tones. Or a better approach in this case is to just select REC 2020 from the color space override and Premiere is going to recalculate not only the brightness but also the color. And now with just a couple of clicks you have a very well exposed image and also with very nice colors. You can even use it as it is if you like or you can grade it from here. If you're trying it yourself and you're seeing any different results, it might be because you're not using the same color space, in my case, BT2020, or maybe your timeline is not set to REC 709. So you can go to sequence settings and just confirm that it's REC 709. And if you did that, the moment you throw it inside Premiere and you choose the color space override to REC 709, it should be all perfect already. Now, if before you're using LUTs and you just wanted a fix because of the Premiere update, you should actually always choose REC 709 and let the LUT also do this conversion of the color space for you. I'm gonna leave two different ones for you guys to download in the description below. One of them is gonna be a corrective LUT, taking the color space to the right point. And the other one is just an artistic one that you can apply right after this one, according to your taste. I hope you guys like it. Another way of dealing with this footage on Premiere is to right click it on the bin and just start a new sequence from that click. But then here you have to be very careful because since these clips were treated as REC 2100 HLG, this kind of timeline will be created. And actually this is intended for HDR delivery. Meaning that now it will look good inside Premiere and everything will seem all right. But the moment you try to export it, you're gonna see that everything looks a little bit off. And this is because you have to check some special options to deliver it in HDR mode. And your reference monitor has to be capable of showing you that. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a mess between what you see on Premiere and what the final file looks like on your monitor. Another important thing with this workflow is that you cannot use hardware encoding, meaning that it's going to be much slower to export these files. All right, let's jump over to DaVinci and I'm going to show you how it deals with these kind of files. Okay, so DaVinci is pretty smart right out of the gate, meaning that it understands already that it's an HLG file and doesn't show you these blown out highlights or anything. It's already converting the brightness down to the right levels. And what you can see here is that it just didn't do the color space transformation. This you're going to have to do manually. And there are two ways of going about it. The first one is just to throw the clip into the timeline. And then in the color page, you can add a node with a color space transform. And it's as simple as selecting what was the input, meaning that in this case was REC 2020. And here you can choose the output as REC 709 in case your timeline is not configured already for that. In my case, since it is, I don't even have to choose it. It's already going to convert to the right colors and you're good to go. And the other way that is also my favorite is going inside the options and in color management and choosing to use the DaVinci wide gamut color space for management. And this is a new approach on DaVinci 17 in which it has this massive color space that just encompasses all the other color spaces that exist. 
meaning that the moment you're using it, DaVinci can just see everything and it's gonna show you the colors in their perfect place. Even if in delivery, it's gonna be output to Rec. 709, you're gonna be able to see everything clearly already in your timeline without any need to do any kind of color space transformation. So all you need to do right now is grade the footage according to your liking. Now I don't have Final Cut to show you guys here, but the approach is more or less the same. You can just use the HDR tools, slap it on the clip and just do the conversion of HLG to Rec. 709. Now I hope this was useful. And if you guys have any doubts about HLG or about the other picture profiles that I can include in my next video about the comparison of all picture profiles for Sony cameras, Tell me in the comments below and I'll be sure to include it over there. Thank you so much for watching. And if you don't follow me on Instagram and Twitter yet, do so. Like this, you can see all the backstage of these videos and also interact a little bit more. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.